فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم section it is recommended that one turn towards the qibla while reciting the quran and it is also narrated that the best congregations are those which face the qibla the author now talks about issue of when i'm reading the quran how should i how should i be here he, sp- he mentions that when reading the Qur'an, face the Qibla. When reading the Qur'an, face the Qibla and the way to sit down. How should one sit down? He says, If you're not praying, face the Qibla. Face towards the Qibla. Because the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says, خير المجالس, The best of gatherings is مستقبل به القبلة, That which the Qibla is faced. Scholars, have spoken about the authenticity of this particular hadith. Naam. So that's where you face. If you're reading the Quran, don't turn your back towards the Qibla or sideways towards the Qibla. And you tend to find that a lot in masajids. You find people having their walls back against the wall and facing away from the Qibla. It's better to face towards the Qibla. That's number one. Number two. The reciter should sit with humility, tranquility and solemnity. The person, the second thing is the way you sit down. وَيَجْلِسَ مُتَخَشِّعًا Sit with humility. بِسَكِينَةٍ وَوَقَارٍ This goes against how we are Somalis and Asians. صح? We move. Rude, you know, back and forth. And this, صح? You Asian brothers, I'm not going to lie. You guys, صح? You guys are... I used to go. I can say that. I can say that because I used to go to a, a Pakistani secondary school, mm. and Abu Bakr. It's good experience. Yeah, but the way they did it, it was like their heads would touch the floor. That's how f- f- close they would get to the floor. Am I lying? Wallahi, that's how they did it. We Somalis, we do record, not sujood. Sah? Uh, so, no. When you read in the Quran, you should be mutakhashya'an bi sakinatin wa waqar kaam. And you need to be humility. Ayah? With his head bowed forward as though looking at the space in front of him. Mutriqan ra'asuh. Mutriqan ra'asuh is that the person is heads forward. And they're reading, they're looking down. This idea of looking right, left, right, left, turning around, keep just looking both directions. Like as though you know foxes, how they are. Huh? And then this is not a good character. The person who's reading the Quran just fully focuses on the Quran and reads it. Naam. It is recommended that the mannerisms he assumes while sitting alone be similar to those he assumes while sitting in front of his teacher, as this is better. The person. He should try to be alone when reading the Quran. Don't, don't just be by yourself when reading the Quran. Make this your norms. This idea that many people have adopted, which is, we, I can't do something by myself, so I have to do it with other people. It's a bit weak. It's a bit of a weak character. That you're unable to do anything by yourself. You can't. Every single thing you have to do with people. If I don't do it with people, then I can't do anything. Sah? To the extent I had some people, they said they went, they wanted to read uh, books. And I said, MashaAllah, what book? Arba'in and Nawi. Hey, everybody reads a couple of pages. Okay. I mean, it's good, alhamdulillah, if you want to do that. But you can't read by yourself? 40 hadith Nawi. Just 42 hadith. Just one volume of Jam Ulum Hikam or Nawi. Yeah? You should try to learn to teach yourself to read by yourself and not always have somebody to do with you. Because what's going to happen is if other people are not there, you're not going to do anything. Nurture yourself and cultivate yourself to know that I have to do everything. There is however nothing wrong with him reciting while standing up or laying down on his side or on his bed. Are you allowed to read standing up? No, he says yes. Are you allowed to recite the Quran? So if sometimes in the masjid, sometimes you feel like if I sit down, 
my khushra is not there, so I'm going to stand up. And he reads standing up, he's allowed to. Okay? If he sits down, is he allowed? Of course he is. Or if he lies on his side in the masjid, he's lying down, he's reading the mushaf, he's lying on the floor and he's reading the mushaf. Is he allowed to? Yes. All of those are permissible. But if you do that in an Asian masjid, lying there reading the Quran, whew, your head would go off. So one time I remember, I went to one masjid, you know, some Asian mystery. There's a green light that comes on. Have you seen that green light? That green light means you can't pray no salah when it comes in. Even if you follow the opinion that, you know, this is only the salat which is the wat al asbab. Well, this is a story to the green light, but I don't want to go into that. <coughs> but I remember a brother who was with, was reading the Quran for so long, mashallah. We 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 our plan was to stay in the mission for long. And he read, I, I like sitting, I can't read something lying down. But he can. So he, you know, sometimes he's reading, he, sometimes he lies on his arm like this, sometimes he does the other side. So, so this time he flipped everything. He lied on his back fully, got the mushaf, and he's looking upwards and he's reading the mushaf. And he's going, in Allah Barik. And he's for sure everything is there. Sometimes he's getting up. He's, he's, in, the, he's, he's in the moment, you can see. <laughs> Our uncle came walking, saw him with the mushaf in his hand. He came walking, wallahi. The thing is, from the corner of my eye, I can see he's walking, I don't know. So he came to him, he took the mushaf out of his hand. He said, you kafir? And he didn't say, you're a kafir. He said, are you a kafir? The boy the brother looks at him, no. How do you What are you doing? He let it out on him. So I told him, no, but brother, it's permitted. No, no, haram. Hadha, haram. But I said, it's permitted. The brother's reading the Quran. He's in the masjid. No, haram. There was no way we could explain it to him. So I asked him, do you know no way? Look how it works. If I said Ibn Taymiyyah or something like that, it would be dangerous, right? Do you know no way? He said, yeah, I know no way. You know no way? He said, yeah. He's not the Imam of the masjid. The man is, mashallah. One of those uncles was always in the masjid, Allah Mubarak. So anyways, I said to him, is the imam in the masjid here? Because it got the brother very upset. And he was very like, this, why is he doing this to me? So I had my phone and we went into the masjid. We went in, we called the masjid, the imam of the masjid. We sat with him and I showed him no way kalam here. He looked. Hmm. I said, where's Shafi'i? Where's Shafi'i? Our madha permits it, hadahu. First I told him at the beginning, just to show you Allah how sad this is. I said Allah is in the Quran and also going to bring this. Those who remember Allah standing up. وقعود and sitting up, sitting down. وعلى جنوبهم on their sides. Lying down. They didn't want to take it. When I said no, we said it. Really? <laughs> That's the sickness in the community. When I said no, we said it. He said, where did he say it? He wanted to know. I asked the book. I said, the eye that I used, no, we used. So, he, when he looked, he said, oh, okay, sorry, brother. The old guy says, I'm sorry, I never knew. <laughs> we Hanafis, we only Hanafis. <laughs> so, so, it's a problem. No. Or in any other posture, dear Shunan. Now, why do we be rewarded for reading in any of these positions whose reward will not be as great as it would be if he sits in the manner described first? So the best is to sit down. Because again, no doubt, every single body use, especially if you know if you come to a masjid, this is going to cause a problem. There's no wisdom to do it, right? There isn't. And one thing, wallahi, I have to, mashallah, admire the Asian community for is the issue of respecting the religion, respecting the masjid, respecting the Quran. That is honorable. That is truly honorable. For us, like in Somali, that respect is missing. We don't have it. Have you ever gone to a Somali masjid where you s f stuck out your leg in the masjid and anyone stopped you and said, put your leg back? No one does it. They don't care. <laughs> oh. Are you with me? It's just no one, like, the manners of respect like that is also weak in the Somali community. Very, very weak. Does it make sense? Like I am, as I told you before, the issue of turning the mushaf with your, with your saliva, 
it's a bad habit that we have. Even I have it. I can't stop. I've tried everything. I forget myself. I'll probably do it after I finish the speech. It's a bad habit. When we do this, we turn it. So we do that with the mushaf. If somebody took saliva and put it on your cheek, would you allow it? Huh? Why do you do it to the Book of Allah? So, I remember uh, one of the mashayikh mentions that somebody done saliva and he opened the he's turning the mushaf with his saliva. And the sheikh said, don't do this. And he said, where's the evidence to not do it? So the sheikh said, he's about to put the saliva on his cheek. He said, why are you moving back? He said, I don't want it. He said, you want it for the book of Allah though? So, you want it for what? So that's another thing. A lot of the times people come to these masajids, they meet these uncles, and these uncles say, respect the masjid. Stop spreading your leg out towards the qibla like that. Don't do this, don't do that. And you say, where's your evidence? Where's your evidence? Ya akhi. Urfan. This is not good. For you to say, where's your evidence? Everything, evidence. It's not here. This is very mawdi'iha. Does that make sense? Because even if what you're doing is right, legal, if it's shara'an, permissible, but he's telling you tariqul akmal, the best of ways. Sah? He's telling you the best of forms, not to spread your legs out, even if, it's, if we say that it's permissible. If we do say it's permissible. Now. Allah says, Verily, the creation of the heavens and earth and the alternation of the night and day are indeed signs for men of understanding. Those who remember Allah standing, sitting, and lying down on their sides and think deeply about the creation of the heavens and the earth. It is authentically narrated that Aisha anha said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would rest his head on my lap and recite even while I was menstruating. So here this shows two things. One, it shows that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would read, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would read, fi hajri, that the Prophet sallallahu would, he would lie down, he put his head on my thigh and he would recite. The Quran, he would read the Quran and I'm on my menses. This shows two things. Number one, that this, con this Jew concept that came from the Jews, which is that when the woman's on her menses, that she's boycotted and she's left. That the Prophet was very affectionate even then, even when she's on her menses. That shows the, how affectionate he was والسلام, to his wife while she was on her menses. That shows that one. Are you with me? The other thing is that the Quran and him being on her thigh, his head would be, he would be lying on her and not sitting and still be reading the Quran. He would alayhi salam. So it shows you even at the time when the messenger was being affectionate with his wives, he was still remembering Allah. He was still, he was still remembering Allah. And the best thing that a, a couple can do with each other is to make whatever that they do with each other a religiously based matter. That they do something that has invo that involves the deen of Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase them in what? In love and admiration. And in another narration, she is reported to have said, He recited the Quran while his head was resting on my lap. So the Prophet would rest his head on her. And you have to remember this is a culture, this is a community, this is a people where. Women are giving no importance before Nabi Allah Muhammad came. They had no value. These women were buried alive. They were killed. Their existence was hated. When the messenger came though, this is what he's doing. This is not normal in the Arab culture. Not at all. It's not known. Even look at the elderly generations that we're from, our parents. This, this doesn't, it's rare to find the old generation 
seeing your dad's head on your mom's thigh. Huh? Read the Quran or something like that. You know, they will shake each other's hands like they were, you know, like two guys, friends, like, Salam Alaikum, I'm traveling. Pops is going, mom's going there. It's so, it's so official, yeah? Yeah? It's very, very official. It's like a business trip that he's just come back from. Salam Alaikum, everything good. I'm traveling tomorrow. Okay. Salam Alaikum. He goes and she goes. You see? You've never come across them eating together, مثلا. You rarely see your parents eating together. You rarely see them just talking to each other about things that are funny or, you know. He's instructing her what to do. She's like, okay, I'll do it. She's, huh? That's how it all is. That's how the perception. So even after Islam came, people still don't want to implement that. They brought their cultures into it. صح? But look at him, alayhi salatu wasalam. Yeah? He sallallahu alayhi wasalam came and this is what he did. He read the Quran and I was on his thigh. What did the Jews do when the woman was, was her menses? They would take her out of the house. That's what the Jews used to do. They would take her outside the house and they would put her in a tent that they built for her. Sheikh Al-Bani mentions in his kitab Adab Al-Zifaf, right? Rahimahullah Ta'ala. They would put her in that tent and she, the menses, they won't let her shower. They won't give her anything. And then when the time of the menses, when she finishes her menses, they will send to her a sheep. And they'll say to her, dry yourself with this. And they'll throw her water. And they say, because of the smell and everything that comes from her, the animal might die from it. The way they dealt with them and the way they treated them. So you have to realize, sisters and brothers, realize how Islam honored women when it came. And what Islam came with was not forced by a, a union that came together. Human rights organization was forcing Islam to do this. It did it. من قبل الله was sanctioned by Allah. The creator who created men and the creator who created women. He's the one who sanctioned it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set, there is nothing better than it. If people go beyond it, wallahi they will suffer. If they go below it, they will suffer. The amount that he set is what's good for mankind. So whatever Islam gave you as a right, there's nothing better for you than that. That's what your body was made to take. Your mind was to take. And the same with, look at men, they say men and women who's stronger. Yeah? Sah? And they say men, is stronger. men are stronger. Physically, right? But how is it that a woman could be nine months pregnant and give birth and go through all that pain? It's something we just we'll never understand. And in nine months, she's carrying that child. That is strength. So her power is different even from the power of the man. You see, the kulluhu is things that Allah did subhanahu wa ta'ala. How he, he divides. Huh? Are you guys the ones who are going to divide Allah's Rahmah? He divides it, He sanctions it. This is for you people, sisters, this is what's for you. Huh? And then after that, the child comes out and she gives birth to that child. Look at the power that Allah created in her. That whole feeling goes after a year or two. She wants to have another child again. <laughs> She's forgotten. The pain has fully been taken away from her. And the idea that the pain was there and disliking it. The rahma and there's another strength in order to want to have another child again. And then when she just becomes pregnant again and she goes through the cycle, she's like, this is the last one, I promise it ain't gonna ever happen again. Sah? Just give it a year or two again. Sah? The point is all of that and the power and the strength that she takes and how she breastfeeds that child. Wallah is ajeeb. The mother wakes up, the child cries, she runs, she breastfeeds this one, boof, the power and the strength. I feel like, wow, are men that strong? Has your wife ever left kids with you? Those of you who got kids and are married, has your wife ever left two or three kids with you and told you look after them? Oh, wow. Well, like every second on that clock, 
it's you can hear it like time does not move basically time seems like it stopped the minute she walked out of the house that's it then you realize final it's a lot of work it really is so that's strength right now Abu Musa al-Ash'ari is reported to have said, I recite the Qur'an in my prayers and I recite it on my bed. Aisha al-Dilaf'an is also reported to have said, I recite my portion of the Qur'an while lying on my bed. So these are the companions. Aisha, she, she used to read her Qur'an whilst on her bed. Would you call it Abu Musa al-Ash'ari would read the Qur'an whilst on his bed? This, now we have an ayah from the Qur'an. We have the Prophet's action and we have the companions. And that's all we need to say that it's permissible for you to do this. Inshallah ta'ala, be back at 9.30, inshallah, half an hour.